I've been asked to do a problem with a pedo tube. So I've chosen a problem from Giancopolis. A pedo tube is used to measure the flow rate of water at 20 degrees C. The flow rate at the center of a pipe having an inside diameter of 102.3 millimeters. The manometer reading on the pedo tube is 78 millimeters of carbon tet. The pedo tube coefficient which is a friction coefficient associated with the pitot tube, is 0.98. Calculate the velocity at the center of the tube, the vo average velocity, and the flow rate. So to tackle this problem, the first thing we have to understand is what is a pitot tube. So I'll draw a sketch here of a tube. And there's a flow which varies with position inside this tube, inside this outer tube, and the flow rate measuring device we're going to use is a pitot tube. So a pitot tube is an L-shaped tube that is positioned in this case uh, to intercept a, the center, center streamline of flow in this tube. So there's a flow out here that has an average velocity, but it also has a velocity as a function of position. <clears throat> the position at the center has the maximum velocity, so Vz max is at the center of the tube, and that velocity comes along this streamline and stops at the pitot tube. Inside the pitot tube is stagnant fluid, and then it's connected to a manometer, which is connected back to the flow at some upstream position. So this is my manometer and the pressure in this tube pushes down the fluid on the manometer so that we get, I've drawn it a little bit off balance here but it doesn't matter, we get the flow in the manometer, the fluid in the manometer displaced. So we want to be able to equate uh, the pressure that we can somehow uh, measure at this stopping point, which is called the stagnation point, with the velocity of the streamline that's being intercepted. So we have a reading here on the manometer, let's call that reading H, and we have a point here, point 2, that intercepts the flow, and I'm going to choose point 1 here, right above where the manometer is measuring, as a point that has a velocity Vz max. And so by analyzing two different problems, one the dynamic problem that has the motion of the fluid in it, and the other the static problem, which is the manometer problem, we can put it all together to get a measurement of the velocity maximum, the velocity that's intercepted by the pitot tube, and the reading on the manometer. So first let's do the dynamic problem. So I'm going to resketch the dynamic problem. So we have a streamline that goes from point 1 to point 2. So this streamline is a single input, single output, steady flow with no temperature change, no phase change, and no um, enthalpy change, no heat in, and therefore this is a classic situation where the mechanical energy balance applies. So mechanical energy balance is delta P over rho plus delta velocity squared over 2 alpha plus G delta Z plus friction is equal to work shaft on over the mass flow rate. Between point 1 and 2 there's no shafts. We're going to neglect any frictional losses because we can take those into account by adding that friction coefficient in at the end. And the two points are at the same horizontal level so there is no gravity difference here. So the mechanical energy balance becomes P2 minus P1 over rho plus V2 squared minus V1 squared over 2. We'll take alpha equals 1 for turbulent flow. equals zero. Now at point two we said that this streamline decelerates to zero so V2 is zero and so we can solve for the velocity we're looking for V1. So V1 which is equal to the Vz max that we're looking for is equal to, bring it over here, two times P2 minus P1 over rho 
quantity square root. So we're good now. We know the velocity that we're looking for in terms of the pressure difference. Now we need to relate that pressure difference to the manometer. So that's the second part of the problem we're going to sketch. And we're going to re-sketch the manometer as a manometer that goes from this top point right here to point one. So although there's fluid moving this way, it's essentially a static fluid problem in this direction and there's a height h, excuse me, let me call this a height x of static fluid here and a height x of static fluid here, both of which are, say, the water in the tube. So if I redraw this manometer from points uh, one and three, let's say, we can do the static fluid problem. So here's the manometer problem now. And I'm drawing it a little bit better now. This is point three. But P3 is the same as P2 because they're at the same elevation. So this is just the same P3 and P2. So that's, we're going to call it P2. And this is P1, the same pressure we talked about before. And here's our manometer with a height difference of H in the carbon tetrachloride. So this is row of carbon tet, and this is row of water, and this is row of water. So we solve this by the usual manometer equations. If we can find two points where there's all the same fluid below those two points, the pressure at those two points must be equal. So PA is equal to PB. The other manometer concept is that the pressure at the bottom of a column of fluid is equal to the pressure at the top plus rho g height. If there are two fluids, the pressure at the bottom is equal to the pressure at the top plus rho g height for each fluid. So with this second concept, we can write first PA. PA is equal to the pressure at the top plus rho g height. We call this x. Rho g height, where this is rho of water, plus rho g height here, where this is carbon tet. That's equal to PB, which is the pressure at the bottom of the column of fluid, is equal to the pressure at the top, plus rho g height, but the height now is X plus H, and the fluid is water. Now we just need to do some algebra. On the left-hand side, we have rho water GX. On the right-hand side, we have rho water GX, so these cancel and we get P2 minus P1 is equal to rho CGH minus rho WGH or rho C minus rho W GH. We can now combine this with our previous result here to get the velocity of the fluid. So combining the two, we get V max equals the square root of two times delta P. Delta P is PC minus, excuse me, rho C minus rho WG.